Hey everyone, it's your host here, Paladin Hansen, back at it again with another video. And this time, from popular demand, viewer request, I have a very cool video. And this is about Bible math and the preservation of the Bible. This comes from many of my friends and also many Muslims who are curious about the Bible and want to know more about the Bible. Uh, many Muslims don't have a Bible in their hands. Uh, many Muslims don't have even access to a Bible in their countries. And so I want to just show them the preserved perfect word of God, and that is the beautiful, beautiful Bible. And so that's what I want you guys to learn and find out and explore with me and about Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic, and the languages and the alphanumerics and everything in between. I want you guys to enjoy this time with me and take it in. Get something sweet to eat when you guys uh, get ready to watch these videos because these are going to be very enjoyable for you. And again, I direct this to ma mainly my, a Muslim audience and a Christian audience because um, there's many Muslims in the world. Um, there's many, many Muslims in the world. And so I want to direct this video uh, to show Muslims some of the misconceptions they might have been told by their Imams, by their Sheikhs. And I also want to uh, show more emphasis and edify people just in the scriptures in general um, coming from um, as least from a Christian standpoint not as bias as against Muslims I'm not trying to come at you Muslims I'm just trying to show you some cool stuff about how you should take the Bible seriously and how the Bible is preserved the Torah the gospel the whole Bible everything this is the preserved word of God and it's a book that you can trust. And it's not the book that you trust, it's the written word of God, yes. But what is the written word of God depicting? It's depicting the true word of God, the word that was made manifest in the flesh. And that is what we Christians profess, is that Yeshua HaMashiach is the Messiah, he's the word of God, he sits at the right hand of the Father as the Son of God, and he came down as the Word, made manifest in the flesh, dwelt amongst us, and took on our sins and forgave us. And so that's what we want to promote here on this channel. And so Christians, Muslims, I invite you guys all in. And I hope you guys enjoy uh, the quick intro. Uh, I have a bunch of PowerPoint slides brought to me by fellow uh, brothers and sisters in Christ from various channels and I'll put links in the description for any of you guys wondering if you guys want to know about these channels and you can look up those channels more um, and I'll put those in the description in each of these videos for various channels I highly recommend a Muslim and a Christian um, or anyone an atheist a mathematician anyone like that can look up because this video is going to be going over again mostly Bible math and literature in the Bible and that is what I want to promote to many of you Muslims and to help edify many more Christians and get you guys on the right path. I don't want to cast my pearls to pigs. I don't want to uh, give everything Muslims and and you know you trample on what I'm giving you. Take this with an open heart and receive. Ask and it shall be given. Many of the uh, videos, the PowerPoint slides that you're going to witness are questions that I've received from comments from many Muslims on the Bible this, the Bible that. And I can say it a thousand hundred million ways, a thousand hundred times in comments. And I can write a whole story in, in, in the comment. But if you don't visually see it, you're not going to get it. Because as we all understand, many people are visual learners. And so in order to help people that are visual learners, in order to understand even okay, complex things like mathematics in the Bible, alphanumerics in the scriptures, that is something that is kind of complex. And so you want something like a PowerPoint slide presentation that's going to be visually impactful for them to visually see it to get it. Whether you're Muslim, Christian, atheist, Hindu, um, Jews, Jews, Christians, know a lot about this. We find alphanumerics in Hebrew and Greek. 
And so I just want to show Muslims um, the alphanumerics in Hebrew and Greek and how we can trust the Bible and how the Hebrew and the Greek are connected. And to my Christian audience, there isn't one or the other. It's like some people want to ditch the Hebrew, some people want to ditch the Greek. It's like, no, there's Hebrew, there's Greek. The Greek is authoritative for the New Testament. The authoritative, uh, the authority is for the Old Testament, the Hebrew. And that is just the reality. And some people want to deny that. Some people want to, you know, ditch one, ditch the other. Look, guys, I'm going to show you mathematical proof not only that the Hebrew and Greek belong together, but you're going to say hallelujah by the end of the videos. So, get back, lay back, get something sweet to eat, and enjoy the video. Alrighty, now that we have our PowerPoint slides ready up to go, we are going to now do a quick overview of the Hebrew alphabet. Let's begin. Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, He, Vav, Zayin, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kaf, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samech, Ain, Pe, Sadi, Kuf, Resh, Shin, Tau. These are the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. They are all consonants, and there is no vowels in Hebrew. There is five sofit. So these are special case endings. These are for the Kaf, the Mem, the Nun, the Pe, and the Sadi, and you can see them quite evidently um, parenthesized in the list that you can see on this PowerPoint. And you guys can, of course, screen record, screenshot all of these slides. You can see there's a modern, an ancient, a meaning, and a gematria. So Hebrew is blessed to be both a phonetic, a picture based, a phonetic based and a numerically based language so um, if you can look on the far left that's the modern Babylonian script with a English uh, transliteration to phonetically pronounce that letter as well as the English letter in between the modern and ancient paleo script the ancient paleo script uh, goes back many thousands of years you can find evidence of this type of script everywhere across the Middle East each has a meaning as well and so if you can look closely at the meanings you can memorize all of that as well as the gematria so each letter is associated with a number it goes from ones to tens then tens to well by tens then it goes from tens all the way up to hundreds so 10 20 30 all the way up to a hundred then it goes by hundreds so it goes all the way from Aleph to Tav is 400. We're going to be looking at the numbers 137 though, and specifically let's start out with the number 1. So the number 1, you know, Deuteronomy 6.4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. That is the Shema. And if we look at Aleph, Aleph consists of three letters, Aleph, Lamed, Pe, and Aleph is 1, Lamed is 30, and Pe is 80, which adds up to 1, 1, one and so we just want to emphasize especially to Muslims and others who don't know that us Christians believe in one God now we're going to go to the next number three out of 137 in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth the word in Hebrew is Elohim being used here for God and if we think of a bowling pin we know that ten bowling pins add up to a perfect triangle. If we continue forward with the name of Elohim, the title for God, it's Aleph, Lamed, He, Yud, and Mem. Aleph, Lamed, He is 36. Lamed, He, and Yud is 45. And He, Yud, and Mem is 55. So even his name, his title, is considered perfectly uh, aligned, geometrical, perfect triangles. If we look at Genesis 1-1, Bereshit bara Elohim et Hashemayim ve'et Ha'aretz. If we look at Bereshit is time, Hashemayim is space, and Ha'aretz is matter. And time is past, present, and future. That's a trinity unto itself. Space is length, width, and depth. That is a trinity unto itself for Hashemayim. And for Ha'aretz, solid, liquid, and gas, of course, is 
a trinity unto itself. In Genesis 1 126, then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Notice how he's talking in the plural format, and he talks to himself thrice in the plural format. Genesis 1.27, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Notice how he also refers to himself or is referring thrice, three times. And the angels in heaven in Revelation 4.8.9 and the four living creatures, each one of them having six wings, are full of eyes around and within, and day and night they do not cease to say. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. And when the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, to him who lives forever and ever. Notice how the words holy, holy, holy is being used three times. So there's a three being used in the literature. Remember Aleph, Alad, Lamed, Pe, add up one, one, one. There's three ones. And one, one, one is a multiple of 37, which is 37 times three, which leads us to our next number, which is seven out of 137. If we look at Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In Hebrew, it is Bereshit bara Elohim, et hashemayim ve'et ha'aretz. There is seven words in Genesis 1, 1. There is also 28 letters that make up the seven words out of Genesis 1, 1. Also, if you notice, 28 is divisible by seven four times. If we look at Genesis 1, 1, the first three words are Bereshit bara Elohim, which are 14 letters, and 14 is divisible by 2, which is 7, or divisible by 7 twice, whatever you want to say. Um, and of course, if you look at the last four words, et hashemayim ve'et ha'aretz is 14 letters, which is divisible by 7. So both are divisible by 7. If we look at Genesis 1 1. Why am I bringing up the, all these sevens? Well, sevens are everywhere in nature. There's seven days in a week. Uh, that is true. Seven colors in the visible light spectrum. Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Everybody learns this, I think, what, third grade? Um, there's so much we can't see, but the visible colors that we do see, there's seven colors in the visible light spectrum and three primary colors. If we look at the note on the music scale, there is seven notes. Do, re, me, fa, so, la, ti. And then the new octave, the eighth one, would be do. And so we also have three accidentals, uh, sharps, flats, and naturals. Seven modes used in Western music. Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, or Mixolydian, I don't even know, Aeolian and Locrian. And we also have the normal human body temperature at 37 degrees Celsius. That's 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit if you're from America or Indonesia. We have sevens everywhere in Genesis. Here's, here they are in just an arranged. And uh, Exodus as well. Here's just a laundry list. Here's Leviticus as well. Just a complete laundry list of just open sevens, plain as day. No try. There's just sevens everywhere. Numbers. Here's Deuteronomy. And as you can see, there is a lot of sevens that are used in the Bible. And of course, not to mention the seven I am's in the book of the New Testament, as well as the seven Marys in the New Testament. There's also seven times Yeshua bled. You can look all this up, guys. Seven people proclaimed Yeshua innocent. You're seeing a theme here, aren't you? Seven statements Yeshua uttered from the cross. Of course, as well, there's seven churches written to by Jesus. You have Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. These are written in the book of Revelation. As well, these seven churches tie back to Paul's seven uh, churches. These seven uh, letters and so on and so forth. So Ephesians, Philippians, Corinthians, Galatians, Romans, Thessalonians, Colossians, all of them tie back 
to a specific letter in the book of Revelation with Paul's letters to his seven churches. So there's a parallel there. And so I just want to show you the emphasis on seven and the totality of one, three, and seven, as well as other numbers in the Hebrew Aleph Bet that we'll get uh, into studying more closer towards into the future. And 137 is the most common lifespan in the Bible. So for my Muslims, my Muslim audience, if you're watching this, if you're still sticking around, you're probably with your jaw on the floor right now like, I never knew this. But if you're watching, the most common lifespan in the Bible is 137. As we can read from the Torah in the book of Genesis, in Genesis 25, 17, and these are the years of the life of Ishmael. 137 years, and he breathed his last, and died, and was gathered to his people. We can also go to Exodus 6.16. These are the names of the sons of Levi, according to their generations, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. And the years of the life of Levi were 137 years. So Levi and Ishmael were 137 years. And to top that off, Exodus 6.20, And Amram took him, Yochebed, his father's sister to wife, and she bare him Aaron and Moses. And the years of the life of Amram were 137 years. So as we can see quite evidently, 137 is the most common lifespan in the Bible for Ishmael, Amram, and Levi. We can see this theme continue with Adam in Genesis 46, 27. And the sons of Joseph, who were born to him in Egypt, were two persons. All of the persons of the house of Jacob, who went to Egypt, were seventy. If you notice, Adam is one man. There are three patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and seventy total descendants. As you can see, the ones, the threes, and the sevens pop up in the literature even without you realizing it. And to solidify, Noah, one man, three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, and 70 grandchildren, which became the 70 nations that are described in Genesis 10. So as you can see, the literary theme is quite evident that there are sevens everywhere. In fact, the verse structure of Genesis 1-1, in fact, the entire chapter of Genesis 1-1 is ordered properly. If we look at Genesis 1-1 in Hebrew, it goes as follows. Bereshit bara Elohim et hashemayim ve'et ha'aretz v'ha'aretz chayita tohu v'vohu v'hoshech yal p'nei tohum v'luach Elohim melechefet Yal Pene Hamain Veyomer Elohim Yahi Or Ve Yahi Or. These are the Hebrew words for Genesis 1 to 3 in Hebrew. And as well, you can see that the first three verses contains 27 words, which is 3 cubed. If we look at the order of the next seven verses in Genesis chapter 1, it is 343 letters. This is verses 4 to 10, which is 7 cubed. And if we look at the order of the rest of the chapter, which is from verses 11 to verse 31, this is 21 verses, which is 3 times 7. So you can see there's an order to the whole chapter, the whole book, the whole Torah, the whole Bible. I've had many Muslims ask me, you know, I want the exact number of letters, X, Y, Z, numbers, and all this. Well, here you go. And the exact number of the letters in the Torah is 304,805. Now, if we do some fun math and do some straw cap, uh, this is just reversing here, as you can see. So I've reversed 304,805 into 508,403. Now, if I just parse them in pairs, 50, 84, and 3, it is 137, which is just some fun little math. Again, just showing you that 137 is 
everywhere. These numbers are everywhere. If we take the first seven digits of pi, 3.141592, that's the first seven digits of pi, and we want to just square them. And that's what we want to do. We're going to take the sum of the squares of the first seven digits of pi. And so here we are, we squared them. Three squared, one squared, four squared, one squared, five squared, nine squared, and two squared. And now we're going to uh, do the equation further. Nine, one, 16, one, 25, 81, and finally we have four. Now, if you know anything about the number, I'm sure you probably are guessing or probably already know what number this is going to be. Well, the number is, of course, 137. 137 is the number uh, that sums up the square of the first seven digits of pi. So 137 is everywhere. It is undeniable. And to add even further, we can look at chlorophyll. This is the important molecule that is responsible for converting light to life especially for photosynthesis in plants and vegetation life if we look at chlorophyll there's 55 carbon atoms 72 hydrogen 5 oxygen 4 nitrogen and 1 magnesium which is a total of 137 atoms that make up chlorophyll which is the molecule again responsible for converting light to life.